Hello, welcome to On Fighting in Thailand, the best news covering Muay Thai. I'm Smilla Sandel, Muay Thai fighter and Swedish kid in Thailand. Make stronger fighters, make stronger people. Today we will be talking to Teresa Wintermi as a part of our series on Nak Moi Ying. We hope to interview several other women over this series. You can follow me on Instagram at smilla underscore the storm underscore fairtex and Teresa's Instagram is her name. Now let's talk to Teresa. Hello, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How's the weather up in Chiang Mai? Sorry? How's the weather in Chiang Mai? The weather, it's, it's pretty good. It's a bit cold uh, for Thailand, but I actually really enjoy that. Okay, nice. Um, but I think we're going to go into the burning season soon, so okay. that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Um, can you introduce yourself? I can. Uh, my name is Teresa, and I'm from Sweden. I lived in Thailand for many years. It's going to be like 14 years now. Wow, that's and right. I had a long career. I spent over 10 years just training full time and fighting wow. full time. Uh, so yeah, and now I just, maybe the past two years, I've been so, sort of tapering off from fighting and okay. trying to do something else. Okay, nice. Where from Sweden are you? I'm from Stockholm. Okay, same. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Um, why did you come to Thailand? Uh, well, it just started, I just, the first, the first time I was in Thailand, I was just on holiday and okay. you, you're from Sweden, so you know it's Yeah, 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 it's very cold. Yes. Uh, so I had nothing to do with Muay Thai. Okay, okay. And so I had already been here like a couple of times for holidays. I really enjoyed it as a country. Okay. And then, um, I read about Muay Thai, like, training Muay Thai at a real camp in Thailand. I read about it in Fighting Magazine and I was like, oh wow, that sounds really cool. Okay. So I went to try it and that's how I kind of got hooked. Okay. Where was the first gym you went to? Uh, it was in Thai, which is uh, close to Chiang Mai. It's okay. like, yeah, uh, I don't know if you know where it yeah, is. Yeah, I know like where it city. is. It, uh, up north. I don't know, like a mountain village? Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Okay. But, um... Do you train in Sweden as well, or? No, I don't. Um, I, I so, did start uh, okay. before I came to Thailand. I had trained. I never had trained Muay Thai. I trained kickboxing because that's okay. the only thing that I could find. Okay. So I trained kickboxing in Sweden for like, but it was like three, four months. It wasn't even six months. So I was like oh. really a beginner. Okay. And then when between my Thai Thailand trips, I did train. Uh, in Sweden, okay, okay, uh, with Muay Thai, but it was, it was never longer than like two months. At okay, time, so I mean, not real. Then. <laughs> but where did you train in Sweden? I trained what? at Slag Quepet. Okay, yeah, I know. I, yeah, once I got into Muay Thai. Yes, I and I, I really liked it there. So yes, yeah, it's that good. Was kind of my gym of choice. Okay, do you miss Sweden or? You... Uh, uh, I do, but I, I don't really enjoy like training. Muay Thai in Sweden, like for me it was really about the whole package deal, you know, training and fighting in Thailand, yeah. and the way it's done here, so I don't think I'd be a fighter if I was in Sweden, <laughs> yeah, I but think I, I do miss some other parts of Sweden though, like I think the, the, the thing I miss the most is like, I, I really used to, uh, used to be interested in fashion, and you can't really dress, okay. there's like no fashion here, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I miss the most, and then my family of course, yeah, Okay, that's cool. How old are you? I'm actually 40, and a lot of people don't realize how old I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm old enough that I, you know, shouldn't have to like justify why I quit fighting. <laughs> how old were you when you started? I was 27, so it was pretty late. Okay. And then you had your first fight like one month off it, after that, or? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I started, but I also ha I, I had trained like some other martial arts. Okay, okay. So, I mean, if you have trained other martial arts, you kind of do have like a base 
Uh huh. Some some basic, even though it's not Muay Thai, you know, it's yes. so it wasn't like a month from scratch. It okay. It was like a month from starting Muay Thai. Okay. Okay. How long have you been training? Oh wait 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 wait. Yeah, I guess it's like thir- fourteen years, thirteen years, fourteen years. Okay. Has, have. Wait wait. How has training changed over time for you? For me, um, well, I guess since I started training in Thailand, I was very, uh, like, obedient. Like, I really did just what I was told. And I don't know how this has changed now in Thai gyms. It's, it, maybe it's becoming a little bit more, like, modernized more modernized and more westernized. Okay. Um, but, but I'm sure you know what I mean. If you train in, like, an old, old school Thai gym, that it really yes. is, like, this is what you do, and... You, you're not really allowed to like question that. Yes, yes. So I was just doing everything I, w- I was told. Uh-huh. And I think sometimes it wasn't like what was best for me. And since I started training like without anyone telling me what to do, at first it was like a shock for me because I was so used to like being forced. Okay. So it's like I, I didn't really, I couldn't get anything done like by myself, just me forcing myself. Uh-huh. But then I started to realize I had time to work on things that I should have worked on much earlier. I just never noticed because I never asked myself what, what I thought or what I, you know, I just did, oh, do like, oh, your, your legs are weak? Well, run more, you know, and I would just like run more. <laughs> but so I actually found stuff that I wish I would have like worked on earlier because that would have probably improved me as a fighter. Now it's too late. But yeah, I just found maybe like two two years ago. So that's how it has changed for me, but okay. but I do, but I, but I also did, did enjoy the the way the, the training was, you know, that it was so strict and uh huh um, and crazy. But yeah, that's basically okay. how, it, how it has changed. Okay, but what did you work on? Um, mostly, like I have really kind of weak legs. Like I build okay. muscles really easily, like in my upper body, but not in my lower okay. body. Okay, that's good. Uh, and People were all, I don't know, you know how the Thai trainers are. It's like, oh, you have weak legs. What yeah. are you even doing? Run yeah. more. Yeah, 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 you know? running. And I was like, yeah, I don't know where they're weak. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I started to sort of like experiment. And then I realized it's like, oh, it's because, you know, all this muscle, like actually my muscles in my feet are really weak. And in my ankles. And it comes <laughs> from there. And I was like, oh, I wish I would have known that earlier. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, it's mostly like has to do with like my my, my legs and my hips and my yeah. hips were like really really stiff from all the kicking and the running. I didn't okay. do any stretching. <laughs> I, I did do stretching, but like not enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I would have worked more on like you know being like mobile, I I guess my kicking would have been like a lot better. Uh-huh. But I kind of did what I could with what I had. So okay. It's not really anyone's fault. <laughs> did you run every day when you had a fight or like? When you yeah, were training, yeah, I did, and like I, I was, um, I was at those kind of gyms where like you had to run. And but I also remember that I had like fellow like Western fighters who okay. didn't run even though they had to. Uh huh. Like I said, I always was very obedient. Okay. Uh, so I, 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 never cheated. I always ran, but this also made me. I was like super skinny at okay. the beginning of my career. Uh huh. Uh, I just couldn't put on weight. Okay. And, like, as I probably shouldn't do it <laughs> and it's because I'm not running so yeah okay. I did run so much but it didn't have how far yeah, was it, had, like, it definitely had a negative impact on on my physique I think okay how far was like a normal run for you it would be like 8k every morning and 4k every afternoon so okay. it's like 12k a day which I think is way too much <laughs> yeah it's a lot <laughs> What was your weight? Um, when I started, okay, so when, kind of depends how you think about it. It was like for, for 54, 55 kilo when I started. Okay. But then I, don't, I didn't have like muscle that I have now. Like now I have like really big muscle, like clinching muscles, like on my neck. I didn't have that before. Okay. And then when I started training twice a day, because I didn't at first, okay. I went down to like 50. I was walking around 50. I oh. was so skinny, like I looked like a skeleton. But it didn't look good on me because I'm like over 170 centimeters. Oh. And then I went up to like 54 and a half when I was 
at Sinbi and then I went up to 56 and that's kind of when I did like that was the best weight for me like performance wise mm -hmm. and then they put me in a higher weight class for angels I think we're going to get to that later in this interview yes uh, so basically I was just struggling to like put on weight and keep that weight on okay um, so yeah but I should have I think for, for, for me the best fighting weight was like probably like between 52 and 54. Okay, okay. Good. Um, why did you fight? Um, I think I, it was mostly like the lifestyle that I really got addicted to and that I really enjoyed. Okay. The fact that you're, because it's so, uh, like not anyone can do it. Like it's, it's hard, but it's not difficult. You don't have to think a lot, you know, you just have to do. And you have to really take care of yourself, and you have to, you know, be healthy. Okay. Um, and I really, I really liked that, that lifestyle. But I think also at the time when I got into it, my life was kind of like purposeless. Uh -huh. So it kind of came at the right time for me. It gave me a purpose. Okay. So were you happy with your fight career? Mm, yeah. I mean, I was. Of course, there are some things that it's like, oh, I missed out on that fight. Uh -huh. I, I wish, you know, that fight wasn't cancelled. But uh, like on the big, on on the whole, yeah, I was very privileged. Okay. Uh, like I always, I always got like on the big cards and like for, for the last probably like five years of my career, I was just doing like all the big fights. Mm -hmm. uh, but then towards the end, I had one year. I think it was 2016, and I was at AKA, and I had all these like really big fights and, and events like lining up. Okay. And for me, in my mind, it was like, oh, this is like my last big year, and then like I'm gonna sort of like taper off. But then all these, all these events were were cancelled, and like not just for me, but they were cancelled like completely. Oh. So, so, and I only found out they would only tell me like two weeks before the fight. So I was like in fights training, like during the whole year, but I never actually got to fight. And at that, at that time. I didn't have any opponents in Phuket anymore, so I couldn't just like get a fight at the local stadium. Uh -huh. So this really killed my motivation, and I think that after, from there it just went downhill for me because I kept fighting, but it never really felt right after that. I just felt like it was really half-hearted, and my performance like really went down as well. Okay. And I could feel like I wasn't. I can do much better. I don't know why this is happening. But so I, it's almost like I kept fighting because. Oh, next time I'm gonna, I know I can do better, but then, no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think this, my performance went down, but I think that the, the reason was, uh, yeah, the motivation just died, kind of. Okay. Uh, how many fights do you have? Jeez, um, I can't, I can't, I keep forgetting, I think it's like 89 now, 88 or 89. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Yes. Um, what was your goal with fighting? Uh, I actually never really had a goal. I always said to myself, and like when people would ask me, I always said, oh, I'm just going to keep doing it Okay. for as long as I love it, for as long as I think it's fun, for as long as I enjoy it. That, that was always my goal. But I think that's also what kind of made me successful because uh -huh. I, I see... I've seen like people that have been training alongside of me and they have like a very specific goal like okay. oh I want to be world champion this year and then it seems like these people never reach their goal and I think it's because they're not enjoying like the journey you know it's not, it mm -hmm. sounds really like like a cliche but I really just did it because I, I loved it and all the achievements they just came as a bonus I was never focused on like oh I want to win this or that I just really did it because I enjoyed it. I never thought it was going to like become a career. It okay. just kind of did. Okay. Did you ever get nervous before fights? Yeah, like I always get I always get nervous for fights. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I always I actually get like questions about like how did you handle Yes. But when they fight, they're also nervous every time, which mm -hmm. is like, you know, 
amazing. You think that they wouldn't be, you know, after 300 fights. Yes. It seems like most, most of them uh, get nervous for every fight. Mm -hmm. Did you have any game plans when you were fighting? Uh, like yes and no. I mean, I was a, a clinch fighter. Okay. And you know, you, your your uh, strategy for your game plan as a clinch fighter is basically to like get in the clinch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And may, maybe like okay, you know, don't you know save yourself for round three and four. You, you know yourself like how that is. Uh -huh. And that's what, very much based on like the five round format. Yes. Um, but then I also noticed, especially in the beginning of my career, and I don't know if you maybe have this as well, because you're, you're Swedish, but you're kind of obsessed with, like, everything is supposed to happen a certain way. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, you've planned everything, and then, like, oh, your favorite shorts are... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the and same. Like, oh, you're fine now. <laughs> yeah, you I'm the same. And it's like, no, but I trained for this opponent. Uh -huh. I was like that for, like, the first couple of years, you know, and this would cause me so much stress because, you know, everything always changes last minute in Thailand. Yeah, yeah. And I think when I learned to sort of, like, embrace that and, like, okay, I just have to be prepared for anything, uh -huh. and that's also when I realized that that's what makes Thai fighters so good because their game plan is, you know, is they're kind of doing that as they're in the ring, you know what I mean? Yes, I know. So, like, you have to change after, you know, what you're going to do in round two. It depends on, like, what happened in round one. This mm -hmm. is something that you, you know, of course, if you know you're going to fight and you know what kind of fighter they are, yeah, you can make some guidelines. But I actually had uh, some fights where I had a game plan and it kind of ruined everything because when it, the game plan doesn't work, you're so sort of, like, uh, obsessed with the game plan and it's kind of too late for you to think of, like, plan B. So... Okay. I think my best game plan is to like not have a game plan and kind of like be prepared for anything. Okay. Um. Why did you stop? Why did I stop? I think like, like I said earlier, I think my motivation actually died like years ago. And this sounds like really sad because I have uh -huh. been, you know, doing lots of fights since then. Yes. But I think, yeah, it was like around 2016 and 17, but it was not like several things that happened then. Okay. Uh, I didn't have like a manager. I didn't have management. And, okay. Like, I was working on the side, so I couldn't really like give fighting hundred percent. And I just felt like my performance wasn't like it wasn't very good anymore. But I kind of kept fighting anyways. Okay. Um. But yeah, why did I? I. Uh, I try. I've tried to quit several times, but then you know somebody offers me a fight, and I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. And yeah. then my last fight was with one guy. Okay. When I got caught, and I think maybe a lot of people just think that I got caught, but I was like, I hit in the temple and I lost my vision. Okay. And I couldn't see anything. Okay. And I told the referee, and he was like, why would lie? And I was like, no, you don't understand. I can't fucking see. <laughs> and then when it came back, it was like double or something. And I knew, I fought her before, I know she's really dangerous. And okay. I was like, oh, this is going to go like downhill. But it was the feeling I got in that fight. Because as a fighter, you're like, okay, you fight anyways. You know what I mean? But for me, I was just like, oh my God, fuck this. Like, no. <laughs> that, that moment, I knew that, like, okay, I was putting other things, uh, th other things have become more important than the fights. So like, for instance, my, my comfort, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Uh, or like, oh my God, my eyebrows. <laughs> that was more important. I was like, okay, so fighting is, like, not the number one in my life anymore. So for uh. me, it was, like, a very sure sign that, like, okay, I'm ready to, to quit. And I, I'm happy that that happened because if that fight would have, like, a normal fight, Okay. And yeah, I, I want to do it 100%. And I'm glad that I stopped because I wanted to and not because I was injured or something okay. like that. Because a lot of athletes, they, they stop prematurely because, you know, against their will. Yes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, but there's not much fighting to do now anyways. And, like, we're doing our own gym now. And right now there's, you know, all the fights are canceled. So it's kind of like, okay. yeah, I couldn't really continue anyways. Who are you doing your gym with? Sorry? Who are you doing the gym with? Oh, okay, so my husband, he is uh, a former a former fighter. He's Thai and he uh, he used to be a Channel 7 champion like okay. 10 years ago. 
Okay, um, nice. And we've been we've been together for for several years. Okay. Uh, he was never my trainer though. He was just like a trainer at the gym. So it's not oh I dated my trainer. Uh huh. Uh, he, he was just like a, a random <laughs> a random type of <laughs> high fighter to me. Okay. So of course he won. It's uh, most of these trainers. It's always their dream, you know, to open their own gym, which I fully understand. It's never really been my dream, but then because we're both ex fighters, it's what we do. It's it just feels like completely natural to like yes. to do it, and of course I can help him because you know I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, an ex fighter too. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so it's me and my husband basically. Okay, you train people like private trainings and stuff. As yes, well. but because we started after the lockdown and basically you know people haven't been been able to like travel to Thailand during this time. Yes. So we're really just stuck with like local people. There's okay. a couple of expats, but. There aren't really like we want to train fighters, but uh, there aren't really much fighters around now. So you know, of course, we're happy with whoever comes. You know, yes. customers we train beginners too. But normal, but right now it's just normal people. You know what I mean? Like both Thai people, like who aren't Thai, Muay Thai people. It's normal people who are just doing it like for fitness and fun. Um, so uh, yeah, that's kind of how it is right now. But okay. Hopefully in the future it will be more like a fighting gym because that's really what we what we want. You know, we want to okay. have like a fight team and like pass on our our knowledge, so to speak. Okay. What's the gym called? Uh, it's just called City. Well, his name is City, okay. which was his fighting name. So it's just called City Muay Thai. Okay. And where is it? It's in Chiang Mai, uh, and it's upstairs at a like a. An existing fitness gym, so okay. the facilities are really nice. And it's just there's a couple of bags upstairs, and like that's where, where we do it. Good. Where have you fought? Where? Yes. Uh, mostly in Thailand, of course. I I never fought in Sweden. I fought in Sweden once. It was amateur, of course, but that fight was actually in Finland, not in okay. Sweden. Okay. Okay. So one fight there. Um, but it was with, uh, I don't know if I even count that because it was with like head guard and all that. <laughs> uh, then I fought in Bali once and I think it was the, the, the first Muay Thai event that was ever held there. So that was fun. Uh -huh. uh, and I fought in Hong Kong once and I fought in Australia once. Okay. I think once or twice. I think, I can't remember. I think it was once. Okay. Uh, yeah, but apart from that, only, only Thailand. Okay. What titles do you have? Uh, I actually I fought for a lot of titles, but the only title I actually won is uh, the WMC world title at 118 pounds, and I won that twice. So I won it once, and okay. from, you know the girl who held it before me, and then I I um, defended it once. But then I think because I changed gyms, so I think that the manager just like he stripped me of the title, but he didn't tell me. Do you know what I mean? Because uh -huh. I wasn't contacted to. Uh, to uh, defend it again, uh, okay. and I saw somebody else got it, and I was like, oh, but I mean, I guess that's just how it works in Thailand, so. Okay. Who was the strongest opponent? Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about this question because a lot of names came to mind, but then I realized that most of them were stronger because at the time of the fight, they were like a lot heavier than me. So okay. you could say it was like, you know, a fight that wasn't, you know, maybe I fought at my regular weight and they, you know, cut like six kilos or something. And then it's not really fair to say they were stronger because that was the reason. So I decided to uh, base my answer on somebody who were the same weight as me at the time of the fight. Uh, so I would have to say, actually Chomani and Kwan Jai. Okay. Because they weren't, they weren't bigger than me and they weren't smaller either, but they were much stronger than me. Okay. Whereas a lot of girls that I fought, yeah, they were a lot stronger, but they also were, you know, the, like heavier, not like two kilos heavier, I'm talking like five plus kilos heavier. Okay, wow. Have you been in any tournaments or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I was in the Muay Thai, what was it called? World Muay Thai Angels Tournament. Okay. Which was quite a big deal. Uh, that, was, that was the first time. Then I was actually supposed to be in the second one as well, okay. but I pulled out, okay. uh, so it didn't happen. And then I, I had this uh, tournament in Chiang Mai. I think it was, was it one year? No, it was two years ago, or a little bit more than one year ago. 
the four girl tournament. Okay. And that's when I fought with South State. So that's like the two tournaments that I did with. Okay. Uh, oh, and another one, one of those one one round knock when it's like four girls and you fight. One fight is only one round. Okay. What was it fighting Shomani? Uh, yeah, oh my god, Shomani. Uh, I had seen her, like she kind of came from nowhere, right? Like I hadn't heard from her uh, about her before when she was in the in the Muay Thai Angels tournament. And then she wasn't favored to be the winner. Everybody okay. thought that Fiona Fa was going to win. Okay. But then Shomani won instead. So she became like a huge superstar uh. after this. But I mean, I saw her, I fought, I fought her in the semifinals. So I saw her fights like in the first in the first uh, segment of the fight when it was 16 girls and then in the next one when it was eight and she was like oh my god like i i had never seen such skill so i was like jesus uh, but i when when you when you look at her fight it looks mostly like she's very very fast okay and i knew a girl before i was gonna fight her i knew a girl who had fought her but that girl was like way like much much heavier than i was and she was like oh she's not strong she's just uh, really fast yeah so this is and this is what i mean with game plan this is why i'm kind of against having a game plan because it always goes wrong at least for me so i was thinking oh she's really fast but she's not that strong but she was so <laughs> strong she was so strong and like the first you know thing she i think she took me okay and i was like holy fuck <laughs> Okay. So that surprised me. She was surprisingly strong. So she's not just very, very skilled and fast, but she has very like different footwork from like any other high fighter that I've seen. Okay. Uh, so yeah, she's very difficult to fight. Okay. You for three minute bouts and two minute bouts and three and five round bouts. What do you like the best? Uh, I really prefer five rounds. And between two and three minutes, I have to say that I don't really feel a difference. Uh, so I, I, I can't really decide between two and three minutes, but I definitely prefer five rounds. And it makes more sense to fight like two minutes if it's five rounds, um, because that's normally how, how it happens for female fights. But the three rounds, like when I started doing those fights, it was just like, oh, but how do I do this now? You know, if you're a, if you're a clinch fighter, you, you have this sort of like game plan where it's like, okay, round one, two, you don't do much. Yes. And then three, four, that's when you start to sort of like tire your opponent out mm -hmm. and round five you just do you know it depends on, on if you're winning or losing so it was really confusing for me like what are you going to do in round in three rounds okay. um so i never really did very well i think in, in three round fights but then when these uh what are they called entertainment fights that are on tv now yes you know like the channel they, they changed the they changed the uh the rules as well so you know you, you're okay. not not supposed to like fight it uh off your back foot you're not supposed to be like too defensive and i think they're yes. mostly telling the tie fighters because that's what they usually do they want yes. people to like go forward a lot uh -huh. and i completely understand that out of like an, enter an entertainment point of view but it just really doesn't suit me at all as a fighter so i really miss like that five round uh the five round game and especially okay. being a clinch fighter that's kind of like when i perform the best and when i can kind of do my thing okay so yeah the, the three round format it never really suited me personally but that doesn't mean that i don't, don't enjoy watching it but yeah it's not my favorite five rounds definitely is my favorite personally okay nice you have been to many gyms but um what gyms have you been to first gym I've been to was uh, in Thai, right? So yes. it's called True B Gym at the time. I don't know if maybe they've changed the, the name now, okay. but it's this guy called B. So I was there for like a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Phuket and I was training at J Prapa for a long time. Like I think it was a year and a half or two years. Mm -hmm. uh, in Bangkok, I had visited, visited uh, a couple of gyms in Bangkok, Kiev uh, Kamtorn and, and uh, Kiev Sarit. Okay. But I haven't spent like a lot of time. It was maybe a week, so okay. it's not really enough time, you know, to mm -hmm. to talk about the training a lot. And then I was at Sim. No, I was at Rawai Muay Thai for a long time, two okay. years. Then I was at Simbi Muay Thai also for two or three years. Then I was in Chiang Mai for a while at Wasampai, but it was only 
two or three months. Okay. Then I went back to Pukki and I was an APA for maybe a year or two. And after that, I was at a couple of other gyms. But at that time, I had kind of, I wasn't really a full time fighter anymore and I was working. So okay. I just followed where my husband was working and they would like let, let me train there for free. Okay. But I can't say that I was, I wasn't there as like a fighter representing the gym. They just kind of let me train. Okay. But you know, I could only train once a day. I couldn't fight and stuff like that. And it was Cook It Top Team and, and Simpson Pinot. So I did enjoy both those gyms because I had a lot of people to train with. But yeah, like I said, I didn't like fight full time. Okay. And I was just like, well, I was just there because, uh, because my husband was working there. Okay. What was the best gym? I think it's really difficult to like say what was the best gym, but for me, uh, for my career, if I look back, I think definitely Sydney at the time when okay. I was there. Okay. Uh, because both in terms of training, like the level of the training was like really, really high. And also in terms of management and this whole thing with, with management, I didn't realize until recently how important it is to have a manager when you're a fighter. Yes. Because later on I didn't have one and yeah, like if, if you're gonna do all the talking yourself, like it's not that's that's not good. If okay. you're a high level fighter you definitely need somebody who is your, your manager. Okay. So from that point of view, uh Cindy was really good and I have to say like um, th that was a long time ago that I was there. But I also really, really uh like Sit um Sitsong Pinong in Phuket. It's changed now name now, it's called Revolution. Okay. Uh, yeah. They have very, very, very good management and very like high level. And I really, I really like that gym. I would recommend that gym if somebody was like it could get and they were where, where I was at five years ago. You know what I mean? Is they're like an upcoming fighter? Okay. I think that gym's really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was a day like in fight camp and without a fight camp? Sorry. What was a day like? With a fight camp and without a fight camp. Ah, uh, okay. Well, uh, during those years when I was like a sponsored fighter, uh, I wasn't really allowed to like take time off. So if I had, uh, if I didn't, if I didn't have a fight, I still had to go every day. Okay. So I only had like maybe three, three to five days off after a fight, and then I was like expected to be back. Um, but of course, then they sometimes it was like okay, no fights today, blah blah blah. But when I had a fight. Uh, yeah, running, of course, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, 8K and then 4K, sometimes there were like additional sprints, and then, yeah, just, I think the training is basically the same in like most gyms, it's just, you know, the warm-up, and then you're on the bag for a thousand years waiting to be called on pads, and then there's like pitching, sparring, so it's like many, many hours of training, like probably two, three hours okay. each session okay. I would say. Uh huh. What do you like about Muay Thai? Um, I think my favorite part about Muay Thai, and I think this makes it different, makes it stand out to other martial arts, it's like it's like the more you learn, the more there is to, to there more there is to learn. Like it never ends. You can always learn more. And especially in Thailand where the trainers they're like so 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 experienced. I feel like every every trainer that I like I've ever kicked pads with, they have something new to show me that I never seen before, and I think that's amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. There's just really there's no end to like all tricks and yeah, that that's what I like the most. So it never it never gets boring because you can always learn more. You're never like fully equipped. Uh -huh. Always like new tricks to learn. Uh, I think that's really cool. Okay, and what do you dislike about Muay Thai? Uh, I think some of the things I dislike, it's probably not so much about the sport, but maybe just more like Thai culture, you know, how it's, uh, uh, because you're the student and they're the trainer that you're supposed, you know, you don't have a say, you know, but I also was very, very like, a, 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 a lot of Westerners, they, they don't really do all of these things, but I felt a little bit like I had no, no saying. And when the training is all you do, it's like it comes your life, right? So I was yes. like, there was a couple of years when I was like, I didn't have a say in like my own life. I was just doing what I was told all the time. Mm -hmm. But then not everyone is as, you know, I took it very seriously and like not everyone does that. So that's like, of course, my, my own responsibility. But yeah, it could be a little bit, it could be a little bit too much. And, and also another thing with the politics in Muay Thai in Thailand that you get, uh, you, 
how you get treated is like who you are is like the hierarchy like who who you have relationships with or your achievements and like how you get treated from day to day can be completely different yes. depending on something that happens but you're the same you're the still the same person and that's what it should be based on but it's not but like i said that's that's more like thai culture really okay do you speak thai yeah i learned that pretty early so okay. i've been like fluently speaking in thai for like the past 10 years at least okay how long did it take you to learn it it took like a year and a half i was studying i went like i went to school to like study it properly i went for a year mm -hmm. uh, and after that i could speak well enough so that i i didn't have to rely on english but then i sort of like picked up more and more but i would say it took like a year and a half for me to like completely rely on my thai okay um how has fighting in thailand changed over time how it has changed yes um well i haven't been like super active the past couple of years i think that i probably you know w when i talk back about like my you know fighting days even even though i did fight recently it feels like it was like maybe five years ago when i was like fighting full time so it has changed obviously like there's a lot more I think the level with both female fighters and foreign fighters in Thailand, like it, it's gone up a lot, you know, like more than five years ago, it really was like, they couldn't even compare themselves to, to, to the Thai fighters. But now, you know, it's getting better and better. And like, I keep seeing this in like interviews and stuff with like Thai fighters and traders that they say too, that like foreigners are becoming better and better. And like, you know, the Thais aren't like su superior anymore. So it's really, and, and that has made them like step up too, you know what I mean? So it's really interesting to see this like rise in level. Okay. What is the difference between female fighters now and when you were active? Well, there, were, there, were, there wasn't a lot, when I started, there wasn't a lot of like female fighters at all. Okay. Uh, but I was really lucky with my weight because I was around 55 kilos, so it was easy to get opponents. And I know that girls who were like bigger than me, and it was really hard for them to get opponents. It was like almost no opponents for them. So I always had opponents. I never had any problem. But then the level was like, there was no in between either. It was somebody who had like 50 fights and you know, they were champions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Or it was somebody who was like a beginner. There was kind of nothing in between. Okay. And it, it, it's that in between that you need, you know what I mean? When you're like building your career. So yeah, everyone that I fought, they were like, better than me which made it like really difficult to win and now it's more there's more there's something for every level both for like ties and foreigners there's that mid-level and like at every level there are like opponents but there really wasn't opponents at all levels before okay do you have any questions for me sorry do you have any questions for me <laughs> uh, after me, so I think there's so much that has changed. Yeah, because you are at Fairtex, and like the training there is pretty modernized. So like, how do you, uh, how is that, uh, and how is it compared to? Because you 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 trained in for some way for a while, so maybe it was a little bit more like old school there. Yes, it was more old school. I would say in some way, and here's more strict. I would say as well okay. at Fairtex. So how do you think that that? Do you think that that has like a big difference for you as a fighter for your performance like do you think it's mostly that you you know you would have you would do you think you would would have been as uh performed as well if you were at a different gym and you did like, the old school so do you think it's like your gym and the more mo like how modernized it is is that making you better as a fighter or is it just is it just you i think um fairtex is very good for me because it it's very modern and they have everything I need right here. Everything's yeah. close and it's easy and um wait, wait. And you have really high level like training partners as well, right? Yes, so yes. That's important. Exactly. Yeah. I train yeah. a lot with Wonder Girl. She helps Sorry. me. I train a lot with Wonder Girl. She helps yeah. me a lot. Are you like restricted because you're a 
under 18 or um i don't think so but i'm 16 now so i think it would be easier for me to get bigger fights and i i don't have any fights coming up right now i think it seems like it's a little bit dif difficult for you to get opponents I yes think maybe because you're so tall and yes i like think so <laughs> yeah i'm very tall <laughs> yeah and but you're not like you're not that heavy you're kind of like even lighter than me i think so you know yes. it, it shouldn't be because of your weight no i think they are too scared of my height <laughs> yeah but then you, you you did really well against like i saw you fight with sub and i was like super impressed because she's <laughs> like oh nobody can beat her and and your fight with her it wasn't even like oh it could have gone either way like you really dominated her but yeah and that's such, such a good um that's so good for you such an achievement but then maybe that's gonna lead to you like having even less opponents <laughs> yes it's hard you right fight, now when you fight like high level fighters and you do well against them it's almost like you can't go back down yes like even there's lots of lots of fighters that you could fight but nobody's gonna like let you fight them yes because you beat so it's like yeah uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope you get uh, are you gonna be on one i hope so that's my goal <laughs> okay yeah i mean I, you you should i don't see why but like i don't know what's uh, yeah uh, um anything around that so yeah I, I hope you do i would be really uh, <laughs> interesting to see you like on a on, I'm on the world scene now we want and everything there's more like not just all oh, high opponents or yes. people who are on holiday here but you get to actually fight you know other other countries like top fighters so i yes. hope you really get into that yes i hope so was there anything that you wanted to talk about that we didn't talk about <laughs> I can't really, I uh, can't really come up with anything right now. Okay. Um, I don't think so. Not that I can think of. Okay. Are there any sponsors or people you want to thank? Um. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Um. Well, I have a, a sponsor for clothes and uh, and the equipment. Uh, Ultimate Fight Fights and Gear. Ultimate Fight Wear. Uh, I like them a lot, and they uh, sent me really beautiful, like, fighting quotes. I want to thank them. Okay. Um, and, yeah, who else do I want to thank? Um, mm, no, I can't really think of any other, like, brands to thank. Okay, I think that's, my that's good. One. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It was nice to talk to you. And I wish you all the best with your fighting. Thank you. I thought that I thought that was a good interview. I learned a lot about her, how game plans work and don't work. I learned about how female fighting has changed a lot. Thank you so much for listening. This has been On Fighting in Thailand, the best news covering Muay Thai. I'm Smila Sandel, Muay Thai, fi Muay Thai fighter and Swedish kid in Thailand. Make stronger fighters, make stronger people. Bye!